Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. As we all know that beam is one of the important structural member which carries the slab load and transfer the load to the column. So this is the main concept of the beam. Apart from this, beam is a flexural member. So when the load is applied on the beam, it tends to bend. The beam will be having bending moment. In addition to that, beam will be having torsional moment as well. So in some places, we cannot ignore this torsional force. In order to bending moment and shear force, we need to design the beam for torsional force as well. So in this video, let's discuss in detail about what is torsion, why torsion is developing in beams, and what are all the IS 456 recommendations for torsional force in beams. So without delay, let's begin now. First, let's start with the basics. Beam is a horizontal structural member which is predominant in flexure, that is bending. When the load is applied on the beam, it tend to bend like this. So this is the bending behavior of the beam. In addition to the bending moment, there will be a force that is called shear force which will be developed in beam. So we provide longitudinal reinforcement in order to resist the bending moment or we can also call it as a main reinforcement and we provide stirrups in order to resist the shear force that we can also call it as transverse reinforcement so we will be having the longitudinal reinforcement and transverse reinforcement in beams in order to resist the bending moment and shear force so in addition to these two forces we will be having the torsion now let's see what is torsion as you all know torsion is a twisting force twisting of a beam under the action of torque that is twisting moment in day-to-day -day life we use keys to open the door so there we apply a twisting force that is called as torque similarly when we wrenching the clothes to remove the water from it so we apply the force at both ends and in the opposite direction so there also we apply a twisting moment so these two are the best examples for a twisting force so similarly we will be having the twisting moment in beams as well this torsion force may be induced in a RCC concrete member in various ways during the process of load transfer in a structural system. The torsion will be developed in a structural member when it is subjected to a twisting force. And beams when fixed or connected monolithically to column at either end can experience torsion. Next let's discuss about why the torsion forces are developed in beams. When the point of application of shear loads do not coincide with the shear center of the beam section, in that case the twisting force will develop in beams. In addition to bending moment, we will be having the twisting moment as well. For example, when the beam is transversely loaded, then the resultant forces passes through the longitudinal shear center of the beam. So in that case, there will not be any twisting moment. The beam only tend to bend. There will not be any twisting moment. If the resultant forces are passing away from the shear center of the longitudinal axis of the beam, then the beam tend to get the twisting moment as well in addition to the bending moment. Here we can have an example of the twisting moment. So in this cantilever slab, the load will be transferred to the beam. The loads are away from the plan of bending. So this will induce a torsional moment in the beam. In reinforced concrete design, the term primary torsion and secondary torsion are commonly used to refer to different torsion inducing situations. So there are two different torsion. One is primary torsion or equilibrium torsion, which is statically determinate. And next one is secondary torsion or compatibility torsion, which is statically indeterminate. First, let's discuss about primary or equilibrium torsion. This primary or equilibrium torsion induced by an eccentric load. This exists when the external load has no alternate load path and must be associated with twisting moment. That means the load whatever coming from the external factor that has to be only depend on the beam that will not be having any alternative path so that will create a twisting moment that is called a primary torsion so this is statically determinate so this we cannot ignore this is very very important one this primary torsion we cannot ignore or release it is necessary to consider the primary torsion in the design this primary torsion is independent of torsional stiffness of the member so when we get the primary torsion in the structural member the 
member has to be designed for the full torsion which is transmitted by the member to the support so this primary torsion will be mainly induced in beams curved in plan and subjected to gravity load and in beams where the transverse loads are eccentric with respect to the shear center of the cross section now let's look into the example for primary or equilibrium torsion cantilever slab supported by a beam without back anchorage so as you can see here the cantilever slab is supported by this beam this the beam will not be having any back support like the slab is only supported by the beam so the slab reinforcement cannot be extended to the supporting slab which is the back anchorage so in this case the twisting moment will be developed in beam which cannot be ignored since the cantilever slab has no back anchorage so the twisting moment has to be considered while designing the beam so as we have discussed before the slab cantilever slab has no alternative load path that means the the cantilever slab will not be having any anchorage back anchorage so the cantilever slab has to only depend on the beam beam is the primary support for this cantilever slab so it has no alternative load path so in this case we need to consider the torsional moment while designing the beam so in addition to the bending moment and shear force we need to consider the torsional moment as well in the design of the beam next let's discuss about the secondary or compatibility torsion as the name suggest this type of torsion induced in a structural member as a secondary effect by rotation applied at one or more point along the length of the member through interconnected member rather than by directly applied loads on it so instead of directly applying load through other members the loads will be applied on the member so the twisting moments induced or directly depend on the torsional stiffness of the member this is statically indeterminate the example is cantilever with back anchorage as we have seen in the primary torsion cantilever without back anchorage is the best example for primary torsion and for secondary torsion cantilever with back anchorage so in that case we can ignore this kind of secondary torsion and along with this we will be having the another example that is the secondary beam the secondary beam will be supported by the primary beam that is the spandrel beam primary spandrel beam so that is also one best example for the secondary or compatibility torsion as per the is code specification in statically indeterminate structure the torsional restraints are redundant and releasing such redundant restraints will eliminate the secondary torsion next let's look into the is code recommendations in class 41 it says the limit state of collapse torsion in general it is given as where torsion is required to maintain equilibrium member shall be designed for torsion in accordance with 41.2 41.3 and 41.4 these are all the classes however for such indeterminate structure where torsion can be eliminated by releasing redundant restraints so this is what we have discussed as a secondary torsion for such indeterminate structure where torsion can be eliminated by releasing redundant restraints no specific design for torsion is necessary provided torsional stiffness is neglected in calculation of internal forces adequate control of any torsional cracking is provided by the shear reinforcement as per class 40 so class 40 is for the shear reinforcement calculation so if we have provided the shear reinforcement as per class number 40 then we can neglect the torsional stiffness and here it is given as design rules laid down in 41.3 and 41.4 shall apply to beams of solid rectangular section however these classes may also be applied to flanged beams as well so by substituting bw for b in which case they are generally conservative next critical section section located less than a distance d from the face of the support may be designed for same torsion as computed at a distance d where d is the effective depth next equivalent shear equivalent shear ve shall be calculated from the following formula so this is very important ve is equal to vu plus 1.6 plus tu by b so here ve is the equivalent shear Vu is shear and Tu is the torsional moment. Here it is given as Tu, that is the torsional moment, and B is the breadth of the beam. The equivalent nominal shear stress 
tau ve in this case shall be calculated as given in 40.1 except for substituting ve by ve so the values of tau ve shall not exceed the values of tau c max which is given in the table 20 that is permissible shear stress so the same shear reinforcement calculation we need to apply here if the equivalent nominal shear stress tau ve does not exceed tau c given in table 19 minimum shear reinforcement shall be provided as per 26.5.1.6 if tau ve exceeds tau c given in table 19 both longitudinal and transverse reinforcement shall be provided in accordance with 41.4 so here in 41.4 reinforcement in numbers subjected to torsion when we need to calculate the torsion moment we have to use this class reinforcement for torsion when required shall consist of longitudinal and transverse reinforcement first one is longitudinal reinforcement longitudinal reinforcement shall be designed to resist an equal bending moment me1 given by me1 is equal to mu plus mt so here mu is the bending moment at the cross section and mt is equal to tu into 1 plus d by d divided by 1.7 So here Tu is the torsional moment, where D is the overall depth of the beam and D is the breadth of the beam. In class number forty one point four point two point one, it is mentioned as the numerical value of Mt, as defined in forty one point four point two, exceeds the numerical value of moment Mu. So Mu is the actual bending moment. If Mt exceeds Mu, the longitudinal reinforcement shall be provided on flexural compression phase, such that the beam can also with the stand and equivalent me2 given by me2 is equal to mt minus mu so the moment me2 being taken as acting in the opposite sense to the moment mu next in class number 41.4.3 transverse reinforcement calculation is given so two legged closed hoops enclosing the corner longitudinal bar shall have an area of cross section asb that is given by tu sv divided by b1 d1 0.87 fy plus vu sv divided by 2.5 d1 into 0.87 fy so but the total transverse reinforcement shall not be less than tau ve minus tau c into b into sv divided by 0.87 fy so here the abbreviations are given that's all about is 456 recommendations about torsion so friends i hope you all like this video please do comment in the comment box if you have any queries your comments are always welcome if you like the content hit the like button also share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe the channel for more videos thank you for watching